the second traditional monetary policy tool used by the Fed is the discount rate. Again, the discount rate is the interest rate that the Fed charges commercial banks for borrowing discount loans at the Fed's discount window. That is why this interest rate is called discount rate. And this is a monetary policy tool because the Fed sets the discount rate. So if the discount rate is higher, that discourages the commercial banks to borrow reserve from the Fed. If the discount rate is lower, then that encourages commercial banks to borrow discount loan from the Fed. So discount loan is also the reserve. The third monetary policy tool, the traditional monetary policy tool, is the open market operation. Again, what market? It is the U.S. Treasury security market. So the Fed buys and sells U.S. Treasury securities in the open market. That is called an open market operation. We will talk about the more details later. The Fed is not the only money suppliers because remember the commercial banks, depository institutions can also create money. Now we want to learn how can commercial banks create money? The answer is the commercial banks can create money by making loans. How? We are going to talk about this money creation process by the commercial banks. Before doing that, we want to introduce another term called monetary base. Why do we have to talk about monetary base? Because monetary base is called monetary base because it is the base that the Fed creates and the commercial banks can create, can use this to create more money. Let me say it again. Monetary base is created by the Fed and the commercial banks can use this base to create more money in the economy. That is why we have to learn monetary base first. Okay, monetary base is defined as currency plus reserve. So monetary base is currency plus reserve. It is the major liability of the Fed. This is the balance sheets of the Fed. This is the asset side. This is the liability side. So the major liability of the Federal Reserve Banks is currency and, and reserve. What is currency? That's your dollar bills, right? Issued by the Fed. The reserve, the reserve is the deposit of the commercial banks in the Fed. So the reserve is commercial banks' assets, but the Fed's liability. So these are commercial banks' money. Monetary base is defined as currency plus reserve. Be very careful. What is the definition of money? Remember? Money is defined as 100% liquidity, that is, the financial assets that you can use to buy things directly, right away, without penalty. So what can you use to buy things? Your cash, currencies, and your checking account balance. So money is defined as 
currency plus deposit. Monetary base is currency plus reserve. They are different. On the SSI, did you see that? The biggest part of the Fed's asset is the U.S. Treasury securities because they are using it to do the open market operation. We will be talking about this later. Now, we want to talk about the money creation process by the commercial banks. Let's make two ridiculous assumptions to simplify the example, to make our life easier. All right? So let's assume that in this economy, nobody keeps cash, and no bank keeps excess reserve. So when you have cash, you make a deposit to the bank right away. You don't want to keep cash in your pocket. Say, for example, you live in the New York City 50 years ago. When you keep cash, you get robbed. So nobody keeps cash in this economy. No bank keeps excess reserve, so all the banks are very aggressive. They only keep the required reserve that is required by the Fed, and then they loan out the rest of the deposits. So these two assumptions are ridiculous, right? Because you do keep cash, and banks do keep excess reserve. But let's make these two assumptions to make our life easier. Suppose that the Fed set the required reserve ratio to be 25%. That is, when the commercial bank receives $100 deposit, they have to keep 25% of this $100, that is $25, in the reserve, at least, that is required by the Fed. Okay? Now, let's see how commercial banks can create money according to this setup. Remember, money is defined as currency plus deposit. So deposit is money. Currency is money. Now, if we assume that nobody keeps cash, that is, in this economy, currency is always equal to zero. Therefore, money will be equal to the checking deposits. First, the Fed conducts an open market purchase of 100,000 government securities from person A. So person A gives the Fed a treasury security of $100,000. And then the Fed pay a $100,000 in cash. So currency increases by $100,000. So monetary base is currency plus reserve. Therefore, monetary base increases by $100,000. So who creates this $100,000? The answer is the Fed because they conduct this open market purchase. So they inject $100,000 into the economy. Next. What will person A do? The answer is, person A does not keep cash. Therefore, person A will deposit $100,000 to his bank. That's called it Bank A. So who creates this $100,000? The answer is the Fed. 
and this one hundred thousand dollars goes from cash to deposit, right? Person A deposit one hundred thousand dollar cash to bank A. Therefore, deposit increases by one hundred thousand dollars. And remember, money is currency plus deposit. Now, in this economy. Currency is zero because person A have already deposit one hundred thousand dollars into the bank, and deposit increases by one hundred thousand dollars. Therefore, money supply increases by one hundred thousand dollars. What's next? Bank A receives this one hundred thousand dollars. What will it do? The answer is Bank A will not keep excess reserve. They will only keep the required reserve. And the required reserve ratio is 25%, therefore person Bank A, Bank A will keep $25,000 in reserve and then loan out $75,000. Say, for example, to person B. Now, what will person B do? The answer is, person B does not keep cash. Therefore, he deposits all $75,000 into his bank. Say, for example, let's call it bank B. Who creates this $75,000? Remember, Bank A received deposit of $100,000. Now, Bank B receives $75,000 of deposits. Money is currency plus deposit. In the first round, the economy in the economy deposit increases by one hundred thousand dollars. So money supply increases by one hundred thousand dollars. This one hundred thousand dollars is created by the Fed. Now, how about this seventy five thousand dollars? Now deposit increases by $75,000. Why? Because person B make this deposit. Where does person B get this $75,000? The answer is person B gets a loan from bank A. Therefore, bank A create this $75,000 deposit. So what is the total money supply increase so far? The answer is, in the first round, deposit increases by $100,000. In the second round, deposit increases by $75,000. Therefore, the total increase in money supply is one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars and because there's no cash nobody keeps cash so increase in money is equal to the increase in deposit these two deposits so money supply so far increases by one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars of which one hundred thousand dollars are created by the Fed the other $75,000 are created by Bank A, a commercial bank. So what's next? The answer is Bank B is going to keep 25% of the deposit. And then loan out the rest. 
75 percent of this seventy-five thousand dollars. Who gets the loan? Say, for example, person C gets the loan, and what will he do? The answer is he is going to deposit his bank, deposit this loan fifty-six to fifty to his bank. Say, let's call it bank C. Therefore. Bank C is going to receive a deposit of fifty-six to fifty. So in this economy, with Bank A, B, and C, the deposit increases by fifty-six to fifty again. So money supply increases by fifty-six to fifty again, and who creates this? The answer is Bank B loan out this fifty-six to fifty, so that the money supply in this economy increases by fifty-six to fifty. So, what is the total money supply now? In this economy, Bank A has a deposit of one hundred thousand dollars. Bank B has a deposit of. Seventy-five thousand dollars. Bank C has a deposit of fifty-six to fifty. So the total increase in money supply will be one hundred thousand plus seventy-five thousand plus fifty-six to fifty. What happens next? The answer is. Person D is going to get. Sorry. Bank C is going to keep. Twenty-five percent of this fifty-six to fifty, and loan out the rest. That is seventy-five percent of this fifty-six to fifty, to person D, and person D is going to deposit his currency into bank D. And then Bank D will keep twenty five percent in reserve and loan out the rest seventy five percent of the deposit to person E, and so on. Complicated enough? Let's use a chart to make it easier. So originally, Bank A. Will have a deposit of one hundred thousand dollars. This is created by the Fed. And Bank A keep twenty five percent of these deposits, loan out seventy five percent. To person B, person B will deposit this seventy-five thousand dollars to bank B, and bank B will keep twenty-five percent of this seventy-five thousand dollar deposit and loan out the rest seventy-five percent to C. C will make a deposit to Bank C, and Bank C will keep twenty-five percent of this deposit and loan out seventy-five percent of this deposit. Person D gets this loan and will make a deposit to his bank D. And Bank D will keep twenty-five percent of this and loan out seventy-five percent of this, and so on. That's the whole story. Okay. If the process is completed, how much more money is created in this economy? The answer is money is currency plus deposit. How much does currency 
increase. Did you see currency here? No. Why? Why not? Because nobody keeps cash. That's the assumption. How about deposit? Deposit increases by $100,000, and so on. Therefore, when you sum all of these up, sum up all the deposits, it is going to be the increase in money supply in this whole process. So how much is that? The answer is we can use the deposit multiplier to calculate. So here is another multiplier. Remember what is a multiplier? If you put five mushrooms into the lab, the next day, you get 15 mushrooms out. So mushrooms multiply by themselves. That is called the multiplier effect. And you put five mushrooms into the lab, you get 15 mushrooms out. So what is the multiplier? The answer is the multiplier must be 3 because you get three, more, 3 times more of the mushrooms. 5 mushrooms multiply themselves 3 times. That's why you get 15 mushrooms. That is called the mushroom multiplier. Now what is the deposit multiplier? The deposit multiplier is, in this example, the Fed increases monetary base by $100,000. Remember, the Fed pay $100,000 cash to person A by buying government security from person A. Therefore, monetary base, which is currency plus reserve increases by $100,000 and that's why money supply increases by $100,000 but at the end the total increase in money supply is not just $100,000. It's more than $100,000. It goes through a multiplier effect. That is, this number is $100,000 times the multiplier. Now, how big is the multiplier? The answer is the multiplier is 1 over required reserve ratio. In our example, the assumption is that the required reserve ratio is 25%, that is 1 quarter, therefore the multiplier is 4. So the total increase in money supply is $100,000 times 4. Therefore, the Fed increases money supply by $100,000. At the end, money supply increases by $400,000. Where is that $300,000 extra dollars from? The answer is commercial banks. 
create $300,000 in money supply. That is why, in total, money supply increases by $400,000. Now, why the deposit multiplier is the inverse of the required reserve ratio? It will be easier to understand if we see this chart and play some Legos. Have you played Legos before? Let's see this chart again. The red bar is the deposit. The blue bar is 25% of the red bar. Right? And green bar is 75% of the red bar. Blue bar, 25% of red bar. Green bar, 25% of this red bar. Blue bar is 25% of this red bar. That's the reserve. Long is 75% of this red bar. Again, blue bar is 25% of this red bar. Green bar is 25% of this red bar. How much is the initial increase? The answer is $100,000, right? The Fed conducts an open market operation. What is the total increase in money supply at the end? The answer is the sum of the red bars. Right? Because the red bars are the deposits. You sum up $100,000, $75,000, $56,250, $100,000, $56,250, $100,000, $56,250, you sum up the red bars. Therefore, the initial increase multiplied by the multiplier, multiplier is equal to the total increase in money supply. All right, now let's play Legos. If you push if you push all the blue bars up, you push all the blue bars up, push, 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 what do you get? If you push all the blue bars up, you just feel, you just feel the whole thing right here, right? If you push all the blue bars, you feel this bar. What is this bar? This bar is equal to this red bar, right? Which is $100,000. Therefore, the sum of the blue bars is equal to $100,000. Therefore, let me say it again, the sum of the blue bars is equal to $100,000. And the sum of the red bars is equal to the total increase in money supply. What is the relationship between the blue bars and the red bars?
The answer is blue bar is 25% of red bars. Right? Therefore, the sum of the blue bars should be 25% of the sum of the red bars. That is, sum of the red bars multiplied by 25% should be equal to the sum of the blue bars. And sum of the blue bar is the initial increase. Therefore, the initial increase is equal to the total increase multiplied by 25%. That is, the initial increase multiplied by 1 over 25% is equal to the total increase. Initially, you put five mushrooms into the lab. At the end, you get total of 15 mushrooms out. Then what is this number? The answer is this number is the multiplier. So multiplier is 1 over the required reserve ratio. Again, each blue bar is 25% of the red bar. Therefore, each red bar is blue bar multiplied by 1 over 25%. That is the inverse of 25%. Therefore, the multiplier is 1 over the required reserve ratio. We use this simple example by making two assumptions, two ridiculous assumptions. Nobody keeps cash and no bank keeps access reserve. But people do keep cash and bank do keep access reserve. Then with these realistic assumptions, people do keep cash and bank do keep access reserve. Will bank be able to create more money or less money? The answer is less money. Why? Intuitively, if people keep cash, then they deposit less money. And deposit is money. Therefore, when they deposit less money, money supply is less. And banks create money by making loans. If they get less deposits, they can create less money. If they keep excess reserve, that is, they keep more reserve in the Fed and making less loans. Remember, banks create money by making loans. If they make fewer loans, then they create less money. 